Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a digital sign run by a Raspberry Pi. I traced a half inch piece of wood on two sides of a piece of aluminum and used this as a reference to figure out where the buttons needed to go. Then I cut the aluminum to size on the bandsaw. I found the center points for the four buttons by essentially making a tic-tac-toe board on the aluminum. I marked these points and then drilled them out with a Forstner bit. Now this only works because it's a very thin piece of aluminum. They don't work great for thick aluminum. With the cover done, I had to make the box, and that was out of half inch plywood. I used a stop block on the sled just to make sure that the pieces were exactly the same, and then I found the center point of one of them. I drilled a hole from the top all the way through, and then from the bottom I drilled a larger hole, but I set a stop on my drill press so it wouldn't go all the way through the piece of wood. This made it so that the button would fit through and be able to screw in from the top. I added some glue to the pieces and clamped them up using some corner clamps. Now this is a very small box, so I couldn't put all the corner clamps all the way around, so I did two on the top and then two on the bottom alternating directions. The box for the display was made in just the same way with the same material, but it was larger so I could use the corner clamps all on one side. This just made it easier to put together. When the glue was dry on the control box, I just used some blue tape to hold the cover in place while I drilled holes in all the corners and drove in screws. When the sign box was dry, I traced it out on a piece of white styrene and cut it with an X-Acto knife. This is just thin white plastic that's often used for vacuum forming. To frame this box, I cut down pieces of aluminum angle on the miter saw. I taped each one in place and then measured the next piece to make sure that each one was perfectly fit. I just put a coat of paint on that box and while it's drying let's talk about the hardware for this project. There's actually not a lot of pieces that go into the electronics. The big work on this project was in the programming. This is the first project I've ever programmed on the Raspberry Pi. I used Python and it was actually a lot easier than I expected it to be. I do have a lot of programming experience but I've never programmed anything in Python so it was really nice to see that Python was more approachable than I expected. So if you've never done it, don't be afraid. There's lots of resources out there for you to get started. Okay, let's look at the hardware. The biggest thing is this 32 by 32 LED matrix. These are RGB LEDs, so you can make any of them any color that you want. I got this from Adafruit along with this Pi Hat that drives this display. You can actually chain these together, so if you want something bigger than 32 by 32, you can stack them together and go from the Pi Hat to the panel, and then here from the panel to another panel if you wanted to chain them. This Pi Hat snaps right into a Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3, but you could use any of them and it would work just fine. An extra thing I got were some extended headers that go up through the Pi Hat rather than being short. This this gives you a place to plug in some jumper wires. These jumper wires are running to the buttons both through the LED and for the button itself. I've only got two buttons set up here for testing and this wiring is all temporary. I'll add two more of these arcade buttons and then also I'll hook up this power switch. And that's really all the hardware you need for this project. I've got a five volt power supply that I'm gonna hook up here in just a second so you can see it working. I just wanna point out that it's five volts and four amps. It needs to have enough amperage to run all of those LEDs. Let's check out how it works so far with some test images and temporary buttons. I'm gonna plug in the power supply and after it boots up, you'll see that the buttons blink a little bit to let me know that it's ready to go. I'm not gonna have a monitor hooked up, so I need to know when that script is actually ready to start running. Okay, so that blink means that they're ready to go. When I power this thing down, it also blinks to let me know that the whole thing is turning off. Because of the camera and the LED, you're gonna see some flashing on here that's visible only to the camera, but it's not visible for me looking at it right here. So it won't be an issue. But when I press a button, an image comes up. If I press that button again, it'll clear the image out. Or if I go to a different button, it'll just switch images. And then this button, once it's hooked up, will be used to start up and shut down the Pi safely. Let's finish building it. On the painted frame, I used some CA glue to attach the styrene sheet and the aluminum frame. The styrene's gonna act as a diffusion layer here with the display behind it. This glue sets up really quickly so I could flip it right over and drop in the display. I press it down flush with the styrene and this is what it looked like. The light up portion of the sign is gonna go outside of my shop, but the control board has to go inside my shop. So I have to run some wires from one to the other over a kind of long distance through a closet. I'm gonna need several wires. Each one of the buttons has a button and an LED, and then they all will share a ground. So that's nine wires total, plus I need two more to go to the on and off switch for the Pi. So a total of 11 wires that run a distance. And the easiest way for me to come up with to run that many wires and have it easy to manage is to start with ethernet cable. Each one of these has eight wires on the inside of it. So all I'm gonna do is snip off the ends and strip out each one of the wires. After stripping, I soldered these ends to a 26 pin connector to go on the Raspberry Pi. I added a picture hanger to the back of the display, then I just put in a drywall anchor to hang it on the wall. This makes it nice and easy to take down in case I need to modify it. 
In fact, I had to take it down to drill a hole to feed in the wires. I put the button wires in from the outside and then had to pull the power supply through from the other side using kind of a snake wire. Then I plugged those in and just hung it on the wall. Notice there's a piece of styrene to act as an insulator in between the Pi and the display. I wanted the buttons to have the same image that they were going to show on the screen. So I designed them in Illustrator, cut them out of my vinyl cutter, and then transferred those to the arcade buttons. This is a process I've done before, in fact I did it on my arcade machine. These stickers go on a plate that ends up inside the button, so there's a clear plastic cover over them so they're protected. You just reassemble the buttons, drop them into the control panel, and then tighten them in place from the backside. I fed the wires through the wall where I wanted the control panel to live, and then put a connector on the end of each one. These connectors match really nicely to the terminals on the arcade buttons. This took quite a while, but then I plugged up all the buttons and all the LEDs and tested them to make sure that they worked. These buttons just gently screw down into the housing for each one of the buttons, then I connected the button for the on and off of the Pi with some wire nuts. With all the wiring and terminals, it was kind of tight in there, so you may want to spread out the buttons if you make one of these. Once I got everything in, I hung it on the wall and it was time to test it out. The button on the top turns the Pi on and off. You know the script is ready to run when you see the animation pop up, like that. Then you can test out each one of the buttons. On Air tells my family that I am recording, they need to be quiet. Danger means I'm welding or doing something dangerous. Filming means it's okay to be loud, but don't come in. There it is. This project was my first Raspberry Pi programming project. I did make the arcade machine before, but there wasn't any coding involved. It was pretty simple just to put it together. But with this one, I had to do a lot more figuring out of stuff. I had to download the library that runs the LED matrix, which was very easy to do. There's a great tutorial on the Adafruit site that explains everything you need to do there. Then I had to write the code to take the button inputs and then generate the images to the matrix. If you're interested in seeing that code that I wrote and seeing how it works, I'm gonna do a simple walkthrough on my second channel. I'll have that linked down in the description, you can go check that out. And if you just want to download that code to play with it or modify it, I'm going to have it on my GitHub that will also be linked down below. If you look at this project, it's actually really basic. There are buttons that tell the code to do something which just send an image to screen. But the more important thing is that this is like an infrastructure that you could build a much bigger, more complex project on if you wanted to. You could have it check Twitter and scroll tweets across the signs. You could have it show animated GIFs that people send. My point being is the possibilities are endless once you have something like a Raspberry Pi that's pretty powerful and connected right as the brain of a project like this. It's a great platform. Don't be scared of it. Just dive in and try to make something. Don't forget to subscribe so you can find out about all the new projects that I have coming out. I also have a second channel that you should subscribe to that's more non-project related stuff. And I've got lots of other project videos and all sorts of stuff that you might be interested in. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.